Hi there folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. We have a great show on tap for you today. We're going to talk about fescue and fescue toxicity with Dr. Nora Schrock. It's bound to be a great show. We're glad you joined us, so stay tuned and enjoy. Thank you. Good it's, great, it's great to have you here. Folks, this is Dr. Nora Schrog. She's a veterinarian, and she's an assistant clinical professor here at Kansas State University's Veterinary Health Center, which is part of the College of Veterinary Medicine. And, and you spend some time on ambulatory, and you're spending your time teaching fourth-year students and some third-year and in the classroom yep. and, and different things to that. And we're tickled to death to have you back here at Kansas State. Well, good. On our faculty. It's fun to be here. Yeah. And we're going to talk today about fescue toxicity and it's something that we hear a lot about and you see a lot of articles about it and you even see a few cases on it but uh, sure. what are some things that you know when we're starting to talk about fescue toxicosis what are what exactly is it well it's it's a disease that's caused by cattle eating grass that is infected with a fungus actually so tall fescue grass by itself isn't a problem but when it's infected with that fungus, then it produces some toxins that can give us the clinical signs we see with fescue toxicosis. So when we're, what kind of fungus are we talking about? I mean, is this, a, I mean, is there specific types or? Well, there, there is a specific type and uh, it's actually an endophyte, a okay. type of endophyte. And that just means that it lives on the grass without hurting the grass. And in this case, it actually helps the grass. It's more drought tolerant. It's more tolerant to insects damage and so it actually helps the grass but it doesn't help the cattle right so when we see the big growths and and things of that and, and we've heard of endophyte infested fescue and and so those are the ones that are leading us to this this fescue toxicity so what happens in the body so once so the cow eats it sure so they they ingest it and then it's not it's not like oh, a bacterial infection where the bacteria gets in there and then the bacteria replicates. That fungus actually has some toxins, and those toxins interfere with the cow's natural ability to regulate some neurotransmitters, actually. And so then those neurotransmitters, since they're not working quite right, there's, that's why we get kind of a menagerie of clinical signs. We can see all <laughs> kinds of things with fescue toxicosis because it can affect all kinds of the regu body regulation. And so one of the main things it does is cause vessels to constrict and then you'll see the, the bottom of their feet kind of start to look like they're falling off. Yeah. So that's, so, that's one of the main problems. So we get in there, the, the, the endophyte, the fungus gets into the body. It's not the fungus that replicates. It gives off the toxins, which neurotransmitters and constriction of blood vessels. That's right. And it's going to cause some problems and yep we're going to talk about those after the break sounds good all right well folks dr Nora Schrock, she's an assistant clinical professor here at kansas state university we're tickled to death to have her on the show when we come back from the break we're going to have more with her talking about endophyte infested fescue and some of the clinical signs that you'll see in your cattle thanks for watching us today and we'll be back in a minute hi there folks welcome back to doc talk dr dan thompson here with dr Nora Schrock. And we both teach here at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. We're tickled to death that you joined us. And, and Nora, we're talking about fescue toxicosis and, and, and beef cattle. And, and we talked about kind of the pathophysiology and the etiology of it. But let's talk about the clinical signs. I wake up in the morning, I walk outside, or I come out in the afternoon. What am I going to see a cow or a feeder calf doing? So, so the most, most of the time, the first sign, if we're actually talking about fescue foot is that you'll see that that animal is pretty stiff in the back end and lame. They can't walk and most of the time it affects both feet at least a little bit. It can affect more one more than the other. I tell you what, the first time I saw it I thought how did this thing get frostbite in September? Because <laughs> yeah. it, yeah. it sure looks like frostbite and so you, a lot of times you'll be able to actually see a line on their leg where there's live skin above it and dead skin below it. And that's from all those vessels constricting down, and then there's no blood supply to that part, so it just kind of falls off. A lot of times you'll get a secondary bacterial infection, and it can start to smell bad. So that's, that's what you'll see if it's actually fescue foot. Yep. And then we kind of talked about, you can see a lot of other things. So one of the other common things, we'll, we'll say it's called summer slump. 
and that's just that they're not they're not eating as well as they normally would they're having trouble regulating their body temperature and so they might get a poor hair coat and they're just not gaining like you would want yeah that's and I've one seen of the those, other things i've seen those cattle where i walk out there and every pen in the feed yard is doing great and there's one pen that we just got in that has that longer hair coat and they're panting on an 80 degree day like it yeah. like it was 100 degrees yeah and, and that's just heat intolerant yep and that's those those neurotransmitters are pretty important for temperature regulation and that that toxin gets in there and just totally screws them up yep yep um any other uh clinical signs or or you know we've talked about the the fescue foot then and, and talk about the the uh summer slump um well, one thing you can see if I mean, occasionally you'll get cattle that'll actually get so much they'll die, and then when you when you open them up, you can see some fat necrosis and that type of thing. Um, but for clinical signs, you can also see some reproductive problems. Uh, they won't cows won't cycle like they're supposed to. They won't produce as much milk as they should. And another thing, maybe worth mentioning here, this is not just cattle. A lot of times you see this in horses too. Oh, yeah. As far as the low milk production and maybe some some uh, calves or foals that are born pretty weak. Yeah, and, and I think that, you know, they, that all goes together. And, and when, we, when we start to think about, you know, this is a disease that we can prevent, and, and treatment a lot of times is unrewarding. But, uh, right. but uh, we do see a lot of the same clinical signs uh, over and over, and, and it's indigenous to different parts of the United States. Right, and that's, and that's true. And, and it, it depends on what type of grass, what type of signs you'll see a little bit. Um, and, and different places in the United States will be a little different, but some of the types of, of grass will produce more fescue foot and some will produce some of the other signs. Cool. Thanks for joining us. And thank you for joining us. We'll be back with Dr. Nora Schrag talking about fescue toxicosis in a minute. This tip brought to you by Batrol 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable, now approved for use in controlling BRD in high-risk cattle. Batrol 100, right the first time, whether it's controlling BRD in high-risk cattle or treating BRD. Hi there, it's Dr. Dan with an on-the-farm tip. Today we're going to talk about receiving pen management for those high-risk calves. Nothing aggravates me more than to have a load of calves come into a feeding facility and our receiving pen is not prepared. What I'm talking about with preparation of that pen First of all, is cattle comfort and a place to lay down. If there's mud in the pen, we want to make sure with the box blade one lap, give those cattle a place to lay down or supply bedding. Another thing, a tip that we need to make sure we provide ample water supply and make sure that we have good long stem hay in the bunk for those calves. That's your on the farm tip. I'm Dr. Dan and thanks for joining us. With BRD, every second counts. And when you get new high-risk cattle, you've got a choice to make. You can either take your chances and wait and see what happens, or you can take charge of BRD. Right from the start, treat bacteria up front with Batro 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable, now approved by the FDA for BRD metaphylaxis and high-risk cattle. Ask your veterinarian about Batro 100 and make it your go-to drug to control BRD and high-risk cattle or for treatment of BRD. Batro 100, right the first time. Hi, I'm Kevin Auctioner, host of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD TV. This segment is brought to you by Lalaman Animal Nutrition, dedicated to the development and production of natural and differential solutions for animal nutrition. Hi there folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University and I'm joined by my friend and colleague, Dr. Nora Schrag, who is a veterinarian here. She's an assistant clinical professor in our ambulatory area of the Ag Practices section here at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. And we're talking about fescue toxicosis, and Nora, when you know, it's one of those things that prevention is is better than treating, and understanding that you have it in your pastures is better than than and dealing with it and and over repetition. But we're still going to have those cases, and sure. so what are some of the things that that we want to do? And when, when we start to see these animals, 
let's start out with the the fescue foot type type of an issue. So so I think catching them early is the biggest key. If you can catch them early and pull them off that grass, feed them something else for a little while. If you're short on feed and you absolutely have to use it, then you start planning. You know you've got that in your pasture. Okay, you're going to flash graze it and then come back to some feed that you know is clean. It's, it's all about how much they get and for how long they get it. So if you can just give it to them in small doses and dilute that out, you're better off and you just you just don't want to let them get too much right now in the summer slump and and we've all seen these calves and and generally i'm speaking calves that we pull off the fescue bring them into a cattle feeding facility um you know what what are some of the things we're going to do you can you can try and help them regulate their temperature right. so try and give them some shade make sure that they're not going to get too hot and then you really just have to baby them feed them on through that they're they're gonna not look as good as the rest of those cattle, but just make sure that as long as they're on feed that doesn't have any more endophyte in it, that's about what you can do for them. Absolutely, and and I've seen you know once we uh, uh, implant the cattle and and get them on grain, the the further we get away from that date of arrival, the the more heat tolerant they become, and sure. they they get over that sure. toxicosis, and, they, and probably that insult from the the toxin is is diminishing. Right, right, and they'll over time that toxin will diminish, and then they'll go back to using their neurotransmitters like they're supposed to, and they'll be able to handle that ninety degree day. Hopefully, are gone. It now. Let's talk a little bit about preventing it, and and what are some of the things that producers and and for you know like Kansas, we're talking more the southeast corner, and and it it varies from year to year. We're seeing more fescue in more places, sure. but but what are some of the things that we do to prevent toxicosis? So. Just managing your pastures and knowing where you have it and where you don't so that you can manage your feed is the big thing. Um, there are places where nearly all their pasture has it, and so then you, then you might need to supplement with some feed that doesn't have any. There's also some endophyte-free strains of fescue, and they've that had some pretty good potential for a while, but it, it didn't work out very well. The grass is not near as tough. But now they've come out with some that actually have a different endophyte. And so the grass is still as tough, it's still drought resistant, but it doesn't cause the toxicosis. That's kind of on the edge. I'm not, not sure how common that is, but it's something up and coming maybe. Well, I think that just knowing whether you have it, whether you live in an area and you have fescue and understanding some of the things you can do to prevent it is very important. When we yep. come back, we'll, we'll do some wrap-up on fescue toxicity. Sounds good. Thanks for joining us this morning. We'll be back in a minute. This segment is brought to you by Purple Wave Auction, the easiest, most straightforward way to sell used equipment. Purple Wave. Straight. Simple. Sold. This is Agriculture Today from Kansas State University. K-State has just released its 2013 Wheat Variety Disease Resistance Ratings, evaluating over 80 wheat varieties. Kansas State's Eric D. Wolf recommends that growers use this new information in concert with this year's Wheat Variety Yield Performance Report when selecting varieties for planting this fall. As the yield performance uh, results come back from uh, the different areas of the state, I would suggest go to the yield first. And when you start to identify maybe three to, to five varieties that look like the top performers in your area, uh, then start looking at the overall disease package. There are some summary statistics or summary tables of multiple disease ratings that are available in this publication. This is K-State Research and Extension. Cow-calf, stalker, and feedlot producers know that effective parasite control improves overall herd performance and profitability. Norbrook offers a comprehensive, economical line of boron and injectable parasiticides for every livestock operation. Consult with your local animal health supplier to set up a program that protects your investment and brings larger cattle checks this fall. See for yourself why the Noromectin line from Norbrook is the practical choice for your herd. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. 
Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy-efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow-calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. Dr. Dan here. Whether I'm driving up and down the roads covering the state of Kansas or I'm getting between Riley and Manhattan for my job, I'm driving a Ford truck. I'd like you to come out and visit my friends here at Dick Edwards Ford. They have a truck that'll suit your needs. Whether you're looking for power with a power stroke diesel or if you're looking for fuel efficiency with the new EcoBoost engine, they got a truck that's just right for you. They're located two miles east of the Town Center Mall in Manhattan, Kansas, and they'll bend over backwards to help you. And I'll see you down the road. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hi there folks, Dr. Dan Thompson back here at Doc Talk. I'm joined by Dr. Nora Schrog who is an assistant clinical professor here at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. Tickled to death to have her on the show today to share some of her expertise with us and we're talking about fescue toxicity in cattle. And you know during the break we were discussing that there are some other things that people might confuse fescue toxicity with and, and what might those be? Well sometimes if, if you have a real high level of selenium that can look pretty similar. Um, and then ryegrass toxicosis, which is a real similar mechanism, can look a lot the same. It can same. have a, a, a fungus infection sure. as well. Yep. 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 And then real early, if early on, these cattle can look a lot like foot rots. Um, so I think the big thing is what type of grass are they on? And if it is tall fescue, then, then this should be a serious concern. But if you're seeing some of these signs we're talking about and they're not on fescue, then you might be thinking about some other things. You bet. But I think that, that selenium, toxicosis, early foot rot, any kind of early lameness uh, that you're seeing in these cattle or any kind of uh, 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 sloughing, you know, a person needs to be, be aware and, and sure. checking those animals on a routine basis. Yep, that's right. So, again, clinical signs... Just, you know, looking at, looking at them for being lame, looking for that line of marcation between live skin and dead skin. That's a, that's a pretty classic one. If, it's, if, it, they ha if their feet have not frozen, then that's, that's a pretty classic And then there's sign. some of the subclinical ones that we don't know we have maybe an issue, but, but we have poor reproductive status or we have... Sure, or, or a rough hair coat or just calves. Poor gains. Yep, calves that should be gaining more than they are. Yeah, so those are those are always cues to, to be thinking about, and and you know an ounce of preve prevention is is worth a pound of cure. When we're when we're talking about prevention, what are some of your highlights for for producers? Yeah, well we're gonna go back to knowing that you have it, and if you know that you have it, then you know know for your area what time of the year is it's the safest that there's the lowest level of endophyte on there, and then what other feeds can you feed in the meantime to kind of dilute out that toxin. Yep, and there's a lot of times before that plant matures that you can go in and you can mow that fescue sure. off and, and control it that way from, from not getting that, that endophyte infestation of the fescue and still be able to graze those right. pastures. Yep. Any uh, last thoughts? You enjoy the, enjoy the job here at Kansas I State? I love it. I love it. Teaching students is, is a new adventure every day. Yeah, well, and, and it's fun. It really is fun. They're great. Well, you do a great job of it. We're proud to have you here at Kansas State, and we're very thankful you took the time to be on the show. Well, it was good to be here. Thanks. And thank you for watching Doc Talk. Remember, if you want to know more about what Dr. Schrag and I do here at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. Remember, we always uh, recommend that you work with your local practitioner. You've been watching Doc Talk this morning. We're sure glad you joined us. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University, and I'll see you down the road. 
Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Doc Talk, produced in cooperation with Drover's Cattle Network and Bovine Veterinarian. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, sure trace mineral supplementation by timed injection. I'm Guy Collier from Collier Herford and Angus at Bruno, Idaho. Uh, we're calving approximately 500 head of uh, registered Hereford, Angus, and uh, have a fairly large uh, recipient herd where we're doing uh, quite a few uh, embryo transplants as well. Uh, we raised Hereford cattle all of our lives. Uh, started out as a commercial program. Uh, mainly started in the purebred business in 72 in, uh, in a big way. Uh, I've served on the board of directors for American Hereford Association. We show cattle on a national level at uh, Reno, Denver, and Fort Worth. I've uh, been fortunate enough to produce several uh, championships at those uh, different shows. And, and uh, we started using Multiman three or four years ago. Multiman is one of those products you can use to uh, get the ultimate uh, performance out of cattle. Around 90 to 95% of our calves are uh, either AI or embryo transplant. Uh, since we've started using the Multiman, we're up around 70 to 75% uh, conception on our first AI service. Anytime that you're able to supply uh, a product like this that can boost the immunity system, get a better response from your vaccines, uh, it kind of fits into a total program. Multiman is one of those products that you know that you can use and you know that it'll be cost effective. And a product like this is very beneficial for us. Mm -hmm.